Hi. I'm Figment. And today we're going to do a follow-up video to a video I had done previously on a half-rack effect unit called the PH90 phaser. Um, I'm sorry it's been a while <laughs> since I posted a, a new video. I've missed at least at least two weeks. Um, but so much has been going around here. Um, I had a pair of headphones die on me. I'm currently trying to repair them now. Um, my Super Nintendo died and first, and I was busy repairing that. Um, I had a hard drive die on me. I had to reformat a laptop. Lost a whole bunch of files there. Uh, it's just been a mess. Um, <laughs> so I've been trying to kind of catch up and, and just kind of get some normalcy back in the office but anyway <laughs> um i just wanted to get that out there for you guys in case you, you guys didn't think i ran off or whatever but let's jump into this video um ph90 phaser follow-up i covered the parameters and kind of how it works in the last video today it's just going to be a demonstration of the unit since that's something I left out the last time. A minor caveat in the beginning though, I should tell you guys. Uh, what I'm going to show you is, is kind of just a demonstration. It's not all encompassing of phase. I'm pretty much just going to be using this single rex loop. Um, but, uh, you know, depending on whatever you're applying phase to, you, you, uh, results may vary depending on the frequency content of the sound of what you're using. So phases is, is, is really a, a difficult thing to master. <laughs> uh, anyway, I suppose what isn't in sound. But anyway, right, to this uh, example. So Rex file, very simple Rex file. It's a very boring guitar loop. I'm going to play that right now. pretty straightforward uh, and of course uh, <coughs> so what I have here is a bunch of PH90's chained together so I just want to let you guys kinda know how I went about this I... did I split it? hold on let me see how I put this together da, 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 da. and from here... okay so I did I did okay. So that that uh, Rex file it gets split here with this uh, audio merger splitter. One signal is going to these two phases that are chained, but I'll get into that later. But the other signal, because it only gets split twice, goes into this top unit and then it snakes down to each one of these from here to here to here to here to here to here to here and then from there so all these um, PH90's are chained they're the same unit uh, all I did for demonstration purposes is I just applied different basic phase parameters for all these to get some type of a different phase effect um, I'm gonna run the same Rex loop through it so you can hear the differences um, they're all bypassed now, so that's how you're able to hear the loop unaffected. But I'm just going to unbypass or turn one on at a time so you can kind of hear how the same unit, uh, the PH90, can affect the same sound, this Rex file, uh, but in multiple ways. So a little demo of uh, a quick demonstration of phase.
So, as you can easily see there, I mean, I could have added four more phasers in, in the chain and just could have gotten four alternative different kind of um, phase effects over the same Rex loop. Um, but I'm just keeping this very simple. A, a single Rex file and a single phaser. Um, you could, of course, you know, I'm just, you know, you could, of course, apply the pH 90 into some other signal chain that you're using um, in a project. That's why I just chain these two together um, just for demonstration purposes. That's where the other split comes out here. Um, and, and these two chain into each other. So a phaser into a phaser. So if we turn this off, you can just get more complex phase uh, settings. Um, you could even, I guess the point I'm trying to make with that example is that you can add applying phase in your signal chain or really being creative with it. Um, like maybe putting some distortion before phase or, um, you know, maybe delay before phase or after a phaser, anywhere in a, in a, in a signal chain and really combining it, maybe two or three phasers somewhere in a signal chain. Um, you can create some really interesting timbres uh, using phase and specifically the pH 90. Um, so that's a little demo of using the pH 90 uh, in an application. But the most important thing I'd say to take away from it is just experimentation. Um, just playing around with your with the pH 90 and, and just applying it in different applications, seeing when it works, when it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> that's where the real interesting stuff lies. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, speaking of upcoming videos, or <laughs> videos in general, um, I mentioned fixing, or my SNES had a problem, and I was doing some repairs on that uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, for whatever reason that sparked an idea to maybe do a video since one of the earlier videos I did was a video on imitating or trying to get an emulator or an emulation of a 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System maybe it could be kinda cool to I don't know make a template or come up with an idea on making an emulator for the uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System so I don't know, that might be an idea for a later video. Um, of course, I've already got a couple ideas written down and things I wanted to get done. But anyway, um, check out the PH90 Phaser, play with it, toy around with it, have some fun, experiment, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>